All right, folks, so you know that it's World Egg Day, but guess what? It's also World Obesity Day, and a lot of people are surprised to know that this is a chronic disease. Here to address it and talk a little bit about, you know, ways to deal with it, head of surgery. Among other things, he says, at the KPH, Kingston Public Hospital, Dr. Lindbergh Simpson. Good morning to you. Hi, morning. That name sounds like a name of greatness. If you're <laughs> called Lindbergh, you must be great. Good to have you on the show, sir. Thank um, you very much. So one third of, a, of adults in the U.S. are obese. One in six children in the U.S. What are our stats in Jamaica? Right. We are not far behind. Um, the last Jamaica Health and Lifestyle Survey, the third one, which came out in 2017, showed that um, one in two Jamaicans are overweight or Did you obese. say one in two? Yep. The incidence, 54 percent actually. The last Jamaica Health and Lifestyle Survey says that 54% um, of our adults are overweight and obese. Let's define obese. Okay, so we, the commonly used definition is a BMI, which is a body mass index, the ratio of your weight to height. Um, that's greater than 30 is defined as obese, whereas those who are overweight have a BMI of between 25 to 29.9. Mm -hmm. So it is a serious problem, and it's one which is getting worse. Yeah, we live in a country. Our cultural context is, you know, um, you hear them say Jamaican men love their women. Thick, and um, we have a lot of men who are, are big-bodied. Right. Um, and we think it's, it's cool, because that's how Jamaicans are, but it really is a health risk. Right. That I we mean, want people to be aware of. right. Besides personal preference, and yes, we don't want to um, shame anyone about no, their no, no, appearance. Not at all. But certainly, what the statistics show is that if you are obese, and even though you may be healthy now, because other people are obese, have diabetes, hypertension, all these chronic health diseases, which are the number one killers. But if you are obese and you compare yourself to a similar person, the same age who is of a normal weight, you're more likely to develop problems later on in life, like diabetes, hypertension, even cancers. Now we're finding out that the risk is greater. Wow. So it is a problem. So it could shorten your life? It, it definitely can. Okay. So let's talk about, well, I'm curious before we get to the fixes as to how we got here. Did we just lose our way in terms of eating and... Well, it was a combination of things. I mean, technology has been wonderful and has contributed to the luxuries which we have now. But if you think about the lifestyle that you have compared to your parents, I mean, there were a lot more movement That's in true. their daily activities in terms of their diet and stuff. It, it was much different. When I see patients um, who have struggled with weight issues, a lot of them didn't have it when they were young kids. But certainly, as they got to adult life, you know, we don't have time to cook a healthy meal. And the quickest option may be the fast food option, which is certainly not usually the healthiest option. That in, and also the nature of work most commonly involves sitting at a desk, maybe Correct. involved with a computer. And then so has your working hours that make exercise difficult. Exactly. Okay. Whereas 40 years ago, work used to finish and you'd go home. Nowadays, um, people work much longer hours. Yeah. And, yeah. Gotcha. All right, so let's talk about some of, the, some of the things we can do to combat obesity. We know Jamaica Moves is on the move. Definitely. Um, what are some of the, the personal decisions that we can make? You said healthy eating. Obviously, we know exercise is one, but there are some other methods um, some of which you said are on the increase in Jamaica. Right. So definitely, I, I want to, you know, as from a population basis, we need to emphasize what the ministry has done with the Jamaica moves, the campaigns to get Jamaicans eating um, better, to, to cut down the sugary drinks in high school. These are all things which, on a population perspective, can and we hope will make an impact on slowing down the trend of increasing obesity. But on a personal level, when you have patients who are already obese, where their BMI is sometimes greater than 40, greater than 50. Oftentimes, we find that diet and exercise may not be um, as, effective as effective enough in that population. So that is a population where we, um, and international data suggested it's better to offer surgery, mm -hmm. because even in terms of getting your diabetes and hypertension into remission, that is the most effective thing once your BMI is over 35. We did our study at um, KPH in 2014 where we looked at 
patients coming to the general medicine, general surgery clinics, and we found even then, ahead of the Jamaica Health and Lifestyle data, that for a one-month period, 53% of our patients who came in for other things, for gallstones, for abdominal pain, for diabetes, 53% of them met the criteria, um, they were overweight or obese with following about the national following, following the, the national, national, national trends, trend. and a quarter of them would have qualified for surgery wow. for their obesity. Okay, so surgical options include the C sleeve? The laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, it's now the most commonly um, done surgery worldwide. Is that the non-invasive one? Um, well, is there a non uh, you know, it's difficult to describe non-invasive okay. because um, nowadays most of these surgeries are done laparoscopically, which involves making small incisions. incisions. And the benefit from that is that the safety has by and large increased. Most patients um, have a shorter uh, recovery time. Most patients discharge home within a few days of surgery and their recovery is much better. And they lose the weight and keep they it up? They do lose the weight. Um, there are individual fluctuations, but most patients lose on average about 60% of their weight wow. and they keep it off. Now, if you look at long-term data in 15 years, they might put on a little bit of the weight, but the very important thing which we noticed is even before they lose the weight, their diabetes oftentimes goes into remission their hypertension also may go into remission. So that's called the sleeve gas? The sleeve gastrectomy. Okay, so you, is that shrinking the stomach? Or well, or we actually work? remove about 70 to 80% of the stomach. Wow, and that's healthy? Well, it? it is certainly healthier than the, option, the other option, which is not doing anything and leaving this patient with their diabetes, with their hypertension, which is something which can cause renal failure, strokes, and lead to premature death. What you know. about gastric? gastric bypass. bypass. Now that is the original procedure which helped to popularize weight loss surgery because that is very effective for not only treating your weight but also treating the diabetes and hypertension. It is a little bit um, of a more complex procedure because that usually involves at least two different anastomoses where you cut the intestines and oh, rearrange that know. and <laughs> yeah some it's people... Involved. It's a little bit more involved, but it's still quite safe. It's still, especially done laparoscopically, the morbidity and mortality is significantly decreased and in 2019. And you have seen these procedures on the increase? In yes, the they are. Okay. I have performed them. And one of the things we are looking to do at KPH, because while the Jamaica Moves and the Sugar Drinks campaign will benefit the population, at the hospital we more deal with individual patient care. And based on the results of our study, which we did in 2014, and we also got some equipment from the region recently to facilitate laparoscopic surgery. We're looking to implement a program at KPH where we can offer that um, procedure to patients who are diabetic, hypertensive, and are at risk for these um, life-threatening complications. That's good news. I hear in my head, we have to go, um, but I hear in my head somebody like, actually Kellyanne McIntosh, she's been on this show. She's an advocate of a keto lifestyle. Are you familiar with the keto lifestyle? Um, not extensively, but I have. So certainly patients who are pre-obese or overweight, certainly diet and exercise has been very effective. And if they can get involved with a nutritionist and get on a schedule, then that can be very effective. Mm -hmm. The problem with the patients who are more you know, at the other extreme, BMI 40, is that they may lose 30 or 40 pounds now over this six month period. When you look at them in a year to two years, they've put on back most of or that. Plateaued. So, right. Gotcha. Okay. Not only plateaued, but they regain the weight yeah. and sometimes regain more. So if the keto diet is not something they can do forever, then um, depending on the year of weight. A diet is a lifestyle. That's why I was asking you what you know about it. But. Um, as Doc said, the healthy eating, the exercise, key and crucial. Yes. Um, beyond that, there are options. Right. So thank and that you also is, works as, along with the surgery as well. It's right. not just surgery alone. Correct. You have to commit also. It's a lifestyle to, change. It is a lifestyle change. Gotcha. Gotcha. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much for the information. No problem. Thanks this for morning. having me. Head of surgery at the KPH, Dr. Lindbergh Simpson. Take a break on Smile. More on the other side. <laughs>